blank. Oh. A lady, when asked her age, replied that she was 35, not counting Saturdays and Sundays. What was her real age? I think she was 60. Wrong! Tom may answer. Yes. Come on, for the cleverest man in England. Come on. Come on. Forty-nine. What was that? Forty-nine. Correct! Correct! I declare Tom Elliott the cleverest man in England! Ah, the benefits of an American education. <laughs> Why are you glaring at me? How dare you look at me like that? <laughs> Why give them the pleasure? They'd have been perfectly happy for you to lose. We cheated. Don't be so sanctimonious! For an American, you really are a god-awful snob. Why do you take them so seriously? I mean, this whole way of Fear. going on is ridiculous. Stop it! Stop the over by the end of the war, and good riddance! If you're overawed by their company, then you shouldn't have come. It isn't good for your nerves. They were showing off, and you were showing off. You wanted to win. I know you did. Not by cheating. No, I know. You wanted to be honestly, truly, genuinely superior as only an American who knows nothing about anything can be. Vivian, I don't think you're very well. I've known this sort all my life, and not one of them is fit to tie your shoelaces. Here. Have you seen my shoes? There's no tea left. Shall we make out of shopping? In my trousers. I seem to have mislaid them. I need a check. You should still be convalescing. Three pounds should just about do it. I'll buy you some chocolate as a treat. Viv, it's time I went. Look about it. Well, I can't very well go to work without my trousers, now can I? Viv, where have you put my clothes? In my briefcase. Where is it? I'm afraid they've gone. Vivian. A great poet shouldn't have to work in a squalid little bank. He should be here writing poems where I can help him. You know we can't afford to live that way. Now, Viv, please, I must go. Mr. Elliot going to work today? Of <laughs> course, Virginia thinks Tom should leave me. She refers to me as a bag of ferrets. It's my nose, you see. <clears throat> writer's insight. Well, she should know. Leonard has her in and out of the loony bin every couple of months. They all hate me because I've got Tom and they all want him. Arteline's desperate for an affair with Tom. <laughs> but Lawrence says, Arteline's vagina is like a bird's beak. <laughs> I know he's always been totally disgusted. my Tom's mind. I am his mind. Oh, good. Have I missed anything? There you are. Looking so lovely. 
lovely. So, how much has Daddy left? What's my share? I'm the eldest child. We were just talking about Mum's life and her evenings. She's going to be jolly lonely now, so I've proposed we should all play more bridge. Oh, by the way, Tom and I can't go on living in that awful little hole in Crawford Mansions. Tom is quite famous now, and there's a house in Chester Street which would be quite perfect for him. And we need a motor car. What's this? It's a list of property holdings and investments. Houses mm -hmm. in Manchester and London. I didn't know we had a farm in Anglesey. So, um, what is it when we add it all up? The trust was set up to protect the estate against taxes. One does not add it all up. That's just the point. So, what's my share? I have to be independent, you know. Uh, Tom's family won't let me inherit anything from him. They're quite adamant about that, so I have to know where I stand. You see, your father didn't want you to bother with any awful papers, so what he's done is... he hasn't said anything about you in the will. You are all tenants of the trust. The trustees have power of attorney. And who are they? Uh, Morris and myself. Oh, so it's all right. The house and the car. Darling, leave it to the boys. They know best. I have a right to some of Daddy's money. Viv, uh, there's no money to share it as such. Uh, Viv, please, please. I'm sure you wouldn't like to go home. The solicitor will arrange everything. Oh, the solicitor? What else does the solicitor have to arrange? Does to know that Tom and I sleep in separate rooms and that I've driven him to it? You have not. And divorce. Tom's friends say we should divorce. There's been no talk of divorce. And does he know that there are times when I'm not allowed in the same room as you? Particularly when the Bishop of Oxford calls. Tom wants to be baptised into the Church of England. Now, if a big baby wants to stick his head into a bowl, it's called baptism. If I want to do it, it's called shampoo. And, and... Has the solicitor taken into account Tom's sandwiches? Sandwiches? God knows I'm tired of making them. God knows he takes them each day into the office and then dives down to a little church in the city and plows through the cheese and pickle on his knees. I mean, what do you suppose is the legal position on sandwiches? I'm sorry, Mrs. Elliot, but Mr. Elliot isn't... Your husband's not... Oh, I know perfectly well he's there. I'm working too hard to keep you in a job. That's what he's doing. Now... <laughs> Is this some deliberate attempt to provoke me? Give me the chairman at once. I want to speak to Mr. Faber. Immediately. I'm terribly sorry, but I'm under strict instructions. Not to allow any... Oh, for God's sake! I am coming over at this instant. I'm opposite this building, and I am going to make the most awful stink you've ever heard. to leave a small bar of chocolate for my husband.
Thank you.